Hi everyone, so according to the weather it is supposed to be summer now but it is so dark outside and it's raining and before I get into this video let me just have a little moan about the fact that like I don't and I understand that this is England, I understand that like you know we're not going to get this scorching hot summer, I understand that, I accept that but is it too much to ask for it to not rain every day? It's just like and then it'll be sunny for two minutes, and then it starts raining again. It's just driving me insane, like, it being rainy this time. You know, I've got every light in this room on. The ring light, the box light, the overhead light, everything on. My summer nail polish, my summer lip, and I've still had to go and put a jumper on because it was cold. It's just really, it sucks. Um, but to carry on with the kind of positive vibe of this video, um, I'm going to talk to you about products that I didn't like. Um, and as usual, you know, this is a kind of usual disclaimer. Doesn't mean they were bad products, doesn't mean that they're a bad brand, doesn't mean you shouldn't buy them, just means that for various reasons, as I will explain, I didn't get on with them. So the first thing is something that I um, have heard so much about from a lot of kind of American YouTubers and bloggers and it's the EOS Shave Cream which just looks like this. I picked this up in Urban Outfitters, I don't know where else you can get it in the UK, probably online, and it was £6 which is expensive for a shaving cream um, but it's kind of a shaving cream not a shaving foam and I was kind of feeling spendy at the time and I thought yeah I'm going to try that, that looks like a really nice um, shaving cream and I shave my legs every day so um, I thought that kind of I might try it and it says you can use it wet or dry, it just appealed to me. I really don't get this. Um, it comes with kind of a pump which is quite nice, like a proper little pump action um, and it's a product that you just pop on your legs and then go ahead and shave but I just really feel like it clogs up your razor, it doesn't give a smoother shave than kind of just using you know a 90p shaving foam and it isn't kind of very water soluble, it takes quite a lot to kind of rinse off your razor and I just didn't like it, I don't think it was worth the money, I know in the states it's a lot cheaper so maybe then but even so I would prefer just a normal shaving foam. Then the next product I've got here, well I've got two tanning products and they're actually by the same brand which is funny because it is a brand that I do really like generally um, but it's the Saint-Tropez Self Tan Dark Bronzing Lotion which looks like this, comes with a pump, um, if I could get the lid off, oh my god comes with a pump like that, it's tinted, um, it's got a really nice kind of green tint to it, you do look a little bit like a swamp monster when you're putting it on I must admit, but um, I'm not quite sure what the whole gist with this is, is with it being dark because the colour that it leaves behind is really not dark, it's lighter than the Lauren's Way dark tan which is kind of the darkest fake tan that I found and I know that my skin's like not super pale, I've kind of got a medium skin tone so maybe if you are fair skinned this will be really dark on you but considering um, I use a lot of central pay products anyway, this gives the same colour, it's nowhere near darker so I think that's kind of naughty considering that central is not the cheapest brand. And then this was something that I avoided the first time around because I knew that it probably wouldn't be for me for that reason in that I knew it would be a very faint colour and I knew it just wouldn't be something I'd like. But um, it's the saint Gradual Tan in Shower and this is the medium shade. They do a light shade first and now they've come out with a medium shade. And what you basically do is you um, use your like shower gel or whatever in the shower, get yourself clean and then turn the water off, slather this on, leave it for three minutes we were kind of standing there in the shower and then rinse it off and then it will kind of gradually develop into a tan. I don't get this. Um, it smells nice, the texture of it's nice, it's kind of a tinted, well it's like a sort of yellowy coloured cream. It's got a nice scent um, but it gives such minimal colour, it's really not worth it and what I really hate about it as well is that you obviously have to let it develop so you can't then get out of the shower and put moisturiser on and I really really hate that because to achieve any amount of colour from this you have to use it for consecutive days. I used it for a week straight and the colour was so faint, it was like barely detectable. You just got a bit of like a yellowy tint and I just didn't really like it at all, wouldn't recommend it. I did buy it on offer, it was about £9 but even so I don't think you get very much um, considering you'd have to kind of do daily applications and it made my skin feel really dry so definitely want to give a miss if you like to have like a tan not just a faint little inkling of a tan. 
Then I have got another thing which is really weird that I think this is disappointing and I wonder if I got a judge but I kind of have looked online and it doesn't seem like I have and this is the Body Shop um, Vineyard Peach Body Butter. Now I love peach scented things, I don't know if you know this about me but I always kind of talk about it on here and I love the shower gel from this range, I love the body scrub from this range. They do kind of vary in scent though, there's a window next to me and people keep walking by I'm just really aware of like them thinking I'm crazy. Um, the body scrub smells more like nectarines rather than peaches, but you know, it's all good. This, however, first of all, the texture of this is not like the normal body shop body butters. Um, it's kind of, it's just not as greasy and I like them to be greasy. It's more of just like a normal cream rather than a proper greasy body butter which is what the Body Shop body butters are to me most of the time. And the smell, it, I don't know, I just think it smells a bit weird. It doesn't smell exactly like the shower gel and I am disappointed by the texture. So I do think maybe I got one that something was slightly wrong with it or maybe like this is the texture it's supposed to be. I don't know, all the other ones I've had are kind of a more um, solid greasy texture and this is just more of a cream and it is the body butter definitely, um, I mean you can see it says it there. It was in the sale, maybe that's why it was in the sale, I don't know but I didn't love that. Then next we have this, these are, it's so funny, these keep being products that like, I like other products but not these particular ones. This is the Garnier Pure Active Micellar Cleansing Water. I really like the original micellar water from Garnier and I have got back into using micellar waters to take my makeup off in the evening just because it's hot um, sometimes. <laughs> or, or I tell myself that it's hot but it is just a nice refreshing way rather than using an oil. This broke me out. Um, I got sent this and the moisturiser and the kind of scrub. The scrub's okay, not something I'd use on a regular basis. The moisturiser I liked, but the smell was a bit weird. And I was trying to determine whether it was this or the moisturiser that was breaking me out. I'm pretty sure it was this. Um, and I just kept getting all these weird little bumps, like here. And just little under the skin bumps. Um, and it says it's for combination to oily and sensitive skin. I have got very oily skin didn't work for me, I won't be using this, um, but I do like the original one. Then one more skincare and then I've just got makeup. The last skincare one is the Organic Surge Daily Care Deep Cleansing Face Mask. I'm a little bit confused by this because I don't quite understand how it's supposed to be deep cleansing because they describe it to be um, combined with purifying clay to deep cleanse and remove dull, blemish prone or out of condition skin and help reveal your natural beauty. If you pump it out, I'll do like a tiny little bit on my hand here to show you, it's just the same texture as a cream cleanser, like exactly the same texture of a cream cleanser. It's not, um, it kind of doesn't dry, it just sits on your face and then you wash it off and it just feels like cleanser. So I'm really, really confused about that. And Organic Surge is a brand that I do generally like. I love their, um, the Blissful Daily Moisturiser. I've loved that for years. But this just kind of sits on your skin. And when you rinse off, I don't feel like it's done anything. If anything, I feel it's more moisturising than deep cleansing. So I'm not really sure about that. I have ordered the British Beauty Blogger Origins mask box, which I'm super, super excited to get my hands on. That should arrive this week. But yeah, not not sure about this. Have you tried this? Did it? Did you think it was a bit weird? Then, last but not least, we've got makeup. The first thing I've got here is the, by um, Lancome, and it is their Grandiose Liner, which is very gimmicky, because the lid can do this. Even though I'm not quite sure why you would need the lid to do that. I was trying to kind of put my eyeliner on and see if it works. Um, this is a product that kind of, it's not entirely disappointing, because I do like it. I just feel like, for the price, it could be more pigmented. It's one that kind of you put on, and it does feel very pigmented, but then when you've done a couple of strokes, the pigment starts to go a bit funny. I am wearing it on my eyes today. Um, and I like it, but it's just not something that kind of I think is worth the money. So it's not necessarily super disappointing. I have used it quite a lot, but I don't think for the price it's the best. And then two products um, here. I've got this one from Kiko, which everyone has told me was really great. And it's the Long Lasting Stick 8 Hour Non-Transfer Eyeshadow. And I've got it in the shade 28 because I'm really into those kind of nude flesh tone, just brighten up your eye area and then wearing liner type of looks. I've not worn proper eyeshadow in months. And 
This is shade 28, which is just that kind of nude shade. I'm wearing it on my lids today, not that you can, you know, really see. It's just a nude colour. But um, it creases. It creases really badly. And to be fair, pretty much everything creases on me. Like, my eyelids are just so oily and greasy and horrible. Everything creases on them, but that is disappointing, considering it's supposed to be non-transfer and stuff. And then, last but not least, we have the Benefit Goof Proof Eyebrow Pencil. This is just a little sample size, um, but I find the applicator a little bit too wide, and it's shade number two, came through with a magazine, so kind of I can't fault the shade, but the applicator, if you can see there, is just a little bit wide, and you don't get a very kind of precise line with it. I did use it in my brows today, but I don't like it as much as I like, like the Soap and Glory ones, and I do think that Benefit is catastrophically overpriced. Um, for a lot of their products, especially for the brow products. But that's everything. Those are all my disappointing products. I would love to know what your disappointing products are in the um, comments down below. I love hearing kind of what you liked, what you didn't like. If you like any of the things I've talked about here, and um, then tell me why you like them. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. And I'll see you all in my next video.